Hello from Rusalka, or as it translates in English, the Mermaid. In 1968, the communist regime in Bulgaria allowed a resort to be built on the Black Sea coast for Westerners only. This gated community was not available to any Bulgarian or other Eastern European. It was found and was exclusively for clients of the French travel operator Club Med, or as it was known back then, Club Mediterranean. The only way for a mortal Bulgarian to go through the gates of paradise was to get a job there. And those lucky ones had the enormous privilege to observe the Western lifestyle while still living in a communist dictatorship. As my parents and grandparents were among these, I have spent many summer days wandering around and keeping memories for life. This place was so secretive that it was almost unknown in Bulgaria back then. Though Club Met left in the beginning of the 90s, it still exists today, but many people have either forgotten about it or seldom hear about it at all. Finally here, let me pick my tickets. Because in order to get to the French part, which is there, that was Westerners only. I have to pick my ticket. Even today, you can't get there just like that. So now I'll try to get inside with my vendetta if they don't stop me. All of you guys who have been here in the 80s, you probably remember this place as a parking. But you know what happened after? This resort was acquired by a Bulgarian investment company. They built a swimming pool, a huge swimming pool, which was here for like around a decade. I don't know what happened, but this was rebuilt. So there is no pool here anymore. The mineral water, it's still there. And it looks almost the same as before. This, guys, it was your dance floor. And not only a dance floor, but that was the Varieté bar. That was where all those performances took place. And here, in this area, the artists were preparing for their stage performance, but not anymore. Do you remember, guys, when you had your breakfast here? You can feel probably the atmosphere. Look at this beautiful scenery, guys. Look at the panoramic view. Isn't it amazing? Being here with your family, having lunch, being caressed by the breeze, the way I am right now. It's so relaxing. They used to put tables here, all the way. And you could pick any food you'd like. And I have a particular memory of a table down there, which had a croissant machine on it. But that was something of an alien technology to me. Small croissants rolling down a line. And you can pick as much as you want. How cool was that? It was all inclusive. But the drinks were paid by those jetons. Write guys in the comments below, do you still have some of these jetons? Most of the people coming to Rusalka were French and Belgians and the communication was going in French. A lot of the employees of the resort were people from the villages nearby. That's the reason you can still meet somebody in these villages speaking a bit of French. The young employees were embracing the Western lifestyle and you could see them in those club mat Trident jerseys or with a Trident sticker on their Soviet cars. The impact this encounter had on them would turn them pro-Western for life. I personally was done with the communist propaganda since child 
as I could even play with those children, with their toys and their comics books. Everything was so full of life, full of color, so different from what we had in our communist schools and shops, if there was something on the shelves at all. I remember when my, my father used to work here, I was drinking Coca-Cola, which wasn't very much spread in Bulgaria at that time. But for restaurants that were getting foreigners, it was something normal. At least this one is gone, definitely. This one, I think, is gone as well. Well, let's see. Yes, it's dry. What a pity. And next up is the beach bar. Here, guys, there is a bar now. Before, during communism, it was a shop that was called Korekom. It was a special kind of shops where only foreign currency was accepted. So you couldn't buy anything with Bulgarian level, with Russian ruble or something like that. And I have a story with my late grandfather who brought me here on my own decision, my own will. And I came with a small change that I collected at home. My parents were working here before and they were getting tips occasionally. And he was just staying by the door. He told me, you can buy whatever you want to buy. And I bought, I remember, those Merci chocolates and Kinder Surprise Eggs. And I don't even remember the rest of the things. That was mainly sweets from the Western world. And I was so unbelievably happy. Now we can buy these products in, in our countries, of course. But at that time, it wasn't possible to find anything. There was nothing in the shops here, guys, in Bulgaria. Lines everywhere for bread, even. And I buy those sweets and I came back home. My mother was, what have you done? But at the end, all of them were enjoying the sweets I've bought. So that was a very, very positive experience that I keep for so many years. people they are and it's a nice sandy beach it's, it's a nice place to come in put your bath don't miss it and it feels fine after this tour of the restaurant and uh, the rest of the area uh, getting a drink coming here checking out the water so stay here get a drink and enjoy enjoy the sun enjoy Bulgaria and Rusalka. Bringing this project into life was not easy for Club Mediterranean either. Their first attempt was a gated community in Sunny Beach behind Hotel Koban. It opened in 1966 but closed just after one season. What was going on there? Piles of food and premium recreational activities for the children of the rotten capitalism were easily visible for the comrades resting around. So the Central Committee of the Bulgarian Communist Party decided to end this. They took the club med bosses on a helicopter and showed them the coast all the way from the south to the north. The choice was obvious but quite painful. The so-called Stokliman Bay, north of Kaliakra Cape, which was and still is a natural reservoir, welcoming hundreds of birds each year. This spot is famous for its magnificent small beaches, terraced slopes and abundance of hot mineral water. Alright, the party is finished. It's a sheer destruction. Look here. Look at this window broken and there are who knows probably birds inside nesting and stuff like that. Vegetation starting to grow and that is a premium bungalow. Right against me, that's Cape Kaliakra. And you can see all the coastline. And 
I'm honestly not comfortable walking here. It looks like it's something that has been renovated. It's been renovated after the communism, after the fall of communism. And it's been basically destroyed for some reason. Look at this room. It's huge, guys. This is a top bungalow here. I think this was for private use. Even during communism, probably some fat communist secretaries were coming here and staying in this particular one. Because, you know, they've been dealing together. Communists on the French side. France was a socialist country, so it was more acceptable in the socialist world than, for example, the United States, which was a total antipode. France was dealing with Bulgaria uh, in many terms, including sending tourists here. And it was predominantly French and Belgian tourists coming here. But believe me, some of the fat communists shots, big shots of communism were coming and staying in bungalows like these ones. So it's quite strange now. It's in this condition. Look at the numbers on the walls, guys. And this is official markings of the rooms and the, the number of the huts, the bungalows. With the red star, why on earth? You would put a red star on that at all. Look how ugly and professional this has been done in order to show the people where the bungalows with particular number is situated. Remember us, Peter FM. If you wonder what Peter is, it's written in Cyrillic. It's a nickname for the Russian city of St. Petersburg. So there was a group here of people from the city of St. Petersburg that has contributed for the beauty of our socialist resort. Some more Russian ideas on how to beautify the, the huts. It's pretty ugly in my opinion. And you guys, you just can't see how nice and tidy and white and fine these buildings were when this resort was working under the management of Club Mediterranean, or Club Med, it's a song today. So to me, this is not funny, it's not nice, it's not beautiful in any way. <laughs> I almost want to cry. And there's something as a fountain down there. I won't be going there, I don't want to see what's inside. Maybe I find a carcass or something, I just don't want to see that. And here, I think these are the first bungalows that they've been taking care of. So these are renovated after the fall of communism. I see some chairs outside, I see some facilities installed, hot water. This used to be a golf. And these are the clay courts. It was full of people here playing daily, from what I remember. And up there, there are more things going on around. There was archery club. I want to show you the, the signs. I want to show you the signs. These are the signs, the original signs from the uh, French time, from the Club Met time. Of course, not written in this amateurish way. Nothing left from the old signs. And you see how good they were, how strong they are still on the position. And everything was written in French and Bulgarian. Bulgarian, French. So you could find your way here. We are going to a positive time and we have to we have to concentrate on what's positive here. That's why I want to finish with these bungalows with these huts here that have been acceptably renovated and still used by the tourists in the area. And with the view of the beach there and the waves, I'll tell you guys.
bye bye see you next time And what the hell is this graffiti? Are you kidding me? Have you been here to draw graffiti? I can't believe that, guys. We'll be there soon. Oh my God, what a journey. I'm so exhausted. I'm going straight to the bar. Should I? No. I will show you first. <laughs>